Cassandra Donnelly from Creative Passages and today I would like to show you a cute little journal page I made for my trauma journal. It's a comfort page, an encouragement page called The Lord is There. And I made it to inspire myself and encourage myself as I deal with my trauma. I That pocket there is made out of glass scene which I mama gummied and that glass scene came from a printable of a collage that I made that you actually saw me make in a previous video called a decorative paper making for my trauma journal. This is my journal card that I made from a previous collage that I already made, but I added more collage pieces to it, including a fussy cut flower and that mamagami awagami paper with the Hebrew word, the Lord is there going down vertically. And of course I have the Lord is there written out on a tiny little tag that I decorated with alcohol ink and I added a little ribbon and a little bit of little <laughs> kind of furry fabric that I loved and that peachy color brings me comfort. So the coral peachy pink that's kind of muted is, is my color of comfort and I use that throughout. And then on the other side of course it says the Lord is good always. And of course you see a little butterfly there. The butterfly represents metamorphosis. I have another flower that's printed on awagami paper that I had scanned of some artwork I made, a decorative paper of flowers. And then the po the journal page itself has a textured background which I made with modeling paste, flexible modeling paste. I added some fabric scraps and some buttons and ribbons. So I want to show you how I made this and explain the inspiration behind it. So I'll explain the inspiration first and then how I made it. For the art making process it will be at 400% but for the inspiration I'll just um, use regular time as I describe more about what the symbolism means. I'm in the art shed. It has warmed up considerably and I want to make some art in my trauma journal. Got really, really inspired today from a devotional that I read from Daughters of the King Daily Devotional. It talked about all the names of the Lord. And I've heard a lot about the names of the Lord before. But in particular, one name stood out to me, and it was Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. And for some reason, that really just comforted me. It spoke to me. It seemed to be just what I needed to hear. The sound of that was so comforting to me, and it made me feel so close and connected to God. So I wanted to include that in my art journal page, which I wanted to make just to bring comfort to me as I work through my trauma memories and some of the, the feelings that, um, that that brings up. I think it's really good to have that comfort in your journal. So this is the Hebrew text for Yahweh Shama, the Lord is there. And I use Sumi ink to capture that on some awagami paper. And this is the ancient Hebrew manuscript from Ezekiel 48, which I found in the Wikipedia. I um, saved it and printed it out. And I want to include that in my art as well. So it's Ezekiel chapter 48 verse 35 where it says the Lord is there. And basically in this manuscript in Ezekiel, God shows Ezekiel of a vision of the future of Jerusalem. He gives instructions to Ezekiel on how to build, rebuild the city that's been devastated and in ruins because Jerusalem has been in captivity to Babylon for 25 years. So God wants Ezekiel to build a new city. He gives him specific instructions and he wants the city to have 12 gates 
to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. So I also wanted to incorporate the number 12 in my um, journal and page. The number 12 has a lot of symbolic meaning and it can symbolize power and authority as well as completeness and perfect governmental foundation. And I really relate to things in the Bible that talk about devastation and ruin, rebuilding and restoration because I feel like my family has gone through devastation and ru ruin from trauma and abuse that happened to me, you know, from early childhood. But perhaps this was something that went back through the generations and what God wants to do is rebuild me, rebuild my family and correct that devastation ruin that's been passed down in my family line and so for me to include the ancient ancient manuscript of rebuilding seems so important um, because it gives instructions on how to rebuild and even though the manuscript talks about the rebuilding of Jerusalem I'm using it as a metaphor for the rebuilding of my family the correction of the bloodline the rebuilding um, and the hope that God has for me and my family. So these are some of the papers that I've been making recently. Some of these you've seen, some of these you haven't seen. But I love to incorporate my own papers into my journals and into my artwork. So these are just some regular pa I tried keeping it simple because I always overcomplicate things. So these are some simple Colors that I made in grays and peaches and corals and purples. You saw some of the this I did with alcohol inks and watercolors in the previous decorative paper making for my trauma journal. So those were the watercolor ones. And this is the Hebrew word for Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there, which of course inspired the whole journal page so now what I'm trying to do is basically decide which of these decorative papers I want to include in this particular journal page those were the alcohol ink tea bags so I'm thinking about that so the papers I want to use I'm putting off to the right that was an old hymn that I decorated this is a collage I made in the previous paper making session maybe no I'm thinking that should go in a separate page by itself this was a paper i made in the last session more alcohol ink paper on tissue paper you didn't see me make that one that's a collage um but i'm thinking i might use it and i'm still kind of deciding but um i decided for now i have the papers that i want and i'm going to set the other papers off to the side so now that I have my papers chosen, my homemade papers, I want to start off with a jelly print on an eight and a half by five and a half cardstock. So it's always fun to start with jelly prints and start with a fresh, clean slate. And so I think I want peachy, golden colors uh, for my journal i'm also thinking about this was the original collage that i made the mamagami um pocket from and i'm considering it using it as a back on the back of it and that's the pocket i considered that at first but then i went for the mamagami one because i wanted to be able to see through it and i wanted it to have that crunch crunchy texture that the glassine has Alright, so I'm using some bronze color. I was just drawn to it, so I'm going to put it on one side. Now, I'm trying to decide what another color I'm inspired by that piece of art. So I chose like a magenta color to add on to it. And so I'm just going to roll the back of this to kind of put it on. So I'm just trying to get some base color onto my paper. Don't really have a plan just yet but I do want to do some collaging so I'm going to choose one of these papers that you saw me make in a previous video it was 
basically an old hymn that I put some stamps on top of. So I'm just going to add these to it. And also that plain paper that I just made was kind of a yellowish brown watercolor. And then this one I made in one of my paper making sessions not too long ago with some watercolors and some stamps. And then this one um, I made recently with a gold permanent marker and some watercolors. And then this is part of the manuscript. I'm going to add that as well. It's really important I get that manuscript in there because it represents the plans to rebuild. And in this case, it is symbolic for the, the way God wants to rebuild my family. So this is also part of the manuscript. It's in Hebrew. And then some more parts of the manuscript. I'm just going to include a lot of that in there. And to me, even though you're not going to really see this <laughs> towards the end, it's important that it's in there. It's like in part of its foundation. So now I'm just tearing out the Sumi ink words of Jehovah Shama, and I'm playing around with where I might put it. But I decide it probably needs to be sort of on top, so I need to wait a little bit later, experimenting with the tea bags. And I do want to use part of this paper that I made. It was like a collage paper. You've seen me make it in one of the other videos. And I'm adding more of the, just a plain paper that's a peachy coral one. And I want to go with the peachy coral colors because they bring comfort to me. So this page is all about comfort. It's creating something that I can look at and feel comforted by, feel inspired and encouraged by. That's the whole part of this page. It's, it's what this page is about. And I think it's really important to include those pages of comfort in your journals, especially if you're dealing with grief or loss or trauma like I am. So now I'm going to add more of the peachy coral there and acrylic paint and some more bronze color. I'm going to try to make up a new color. So I also have pink and white. I'm going to mix them all up and then it makes this sort of dusty rust rose color with the slight hint of like peach which um seems to be you know what i want it's, it's like a comforting color to me and so now i'm just going to play around with these stencils to see if i can get some interesting patterns on there so this is just like the cleanup paper um, and I'm going to use the ghost print for my journal. So I'm just trying to get the extra um, off the jelly plate on just a scrap sheet of paper, which I can also use for more collage. So I'm also going to wipe up any extra paint on there just so I don't waste it. I'm not too concerned about what it looks like on that paper. It's just going to be scrap, scrap paper. So now I want to um, let that sit on there and then pull it up with a transparent paint. I know from experience that my transparent white is not 100% transparent. So what I'm going to do is mix it up with this gloss glaze liquid. And um, I'm going to add just a little bit of that transparent white to it because I really do want this to be transparent so I can see all the imprints, you know, from the stencils that I just put down. So now it should be dry enough. I'm going to pour that onto um, my painter's paper and just rub my brayer through it and then just put it onto my plate. So now I'm going to put my paper on there, but the paper has to be on there long enough for it to pick up the paint. So since I'm making a video, I'm going to go ahead and use up my time in a constructive way by <laughs> working on the back of this paper while it sticks to the, <clears throat> the paper, you know, the side I want. So I'm going to use more of the old hymn book paper, which I added some watercolor to. And I'm also going to add some washi. And again, I don't have a particular plan. I just want to just add a little bit of collage on here while I'm waiting for um, the papers to pick up that print. So now this is just another scrap paper in my collection I'm going to add down. I, I like the way that it looked and I like the color of it and more washi.
And I like that right there. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to make sure everything gets stuck down well. And so I was just cleaning off my brayer there a little bit. And I'm going to pick up any extra paint. Make sure everything's stuck pretty well. And I'm going to pull up my print. My collage was coming off just a little bit, so I carefully put it back on there and I'm going to glue it down just to make sure it stays in place. So this is what I have so far and I'm just adding a little bit of visual interest to my journal page. So now I want to add more visual interest by putting my distress oxides in through a stencil. So this is just a little flower stencil I got somewhere. I'm using sort of a coral color of the Distress Oxide inks. These inks um, will sort of fade um, if you add something like that's wet on top of it, but I don't mind that. I'm just trying to get some more visual interest and I do like the effects of like the distressed look when you add water, things fade. I think that's kind of cool. So now I'm going to just ink the edges with this dark grayish black uh, Distress Oxide ink. I just want things to you know, be visually interesting and maybe look a little bit antique-ish. But it's important that I, I want this to look a little bit distressed and antique-ish, but at the same time, I want it to be very comforting. So now I'm just adding a little bit of like the walnut uh, distress oxide ink to different parts of it to make it sort of look more antique and um, distressed. And I do plan for this to get wet. So I'm going to add more stuff to it. So now you can't see the collage that well, but now I'm going to go ahead and add some acrylic medium to it because what I want to do is add a little bit of texture. So I'm debating between the acrylic medium or the um, modeling paste. And I decided to go with modeling paste Although in retrospect, I think maybe I should have used acrylic medium. But before I put it down, I want to decide on where my pocket is going to be. So that's why I was measuring there with a piece of paper where my pocket would go. Because I'm not going to put the extra texture where the pocket is. I'm just going to put it on the outside of it. Like I said, I did choose the flexible modeling paste for this. And I'm going to put it through a stencil. And I'm going to use my um, plastic paint shaper to put it on. And I'm just basically sliding it on there and so this is a good way to add texture. The difference between the the modeling paste versus like a thick acrylic medium is that you would probably see through the acrylic medium better than you can see through the, the modeling paste. I thought maybe you could still see through the modeling paste a little bit, um, but it covers up my collage quite a bit, which you'll you'll see. You can see through it a little bit, but in retrospect, maybe I should have chose acrylic medium. But either way, I like the results that I got, and I know all of those collage elements were there. So I haven't used either one quite a lot, but I have used them a little bit, so I'm still learning. But this does give it really, really interesting texture. So I've dried it. And now I'm adding my watercolor set, which is a Curitate Gansey Candy watercolor set that I'm using. And so I'm basically just putting it on top of the modeling paste which the modeling paste is sort of like a resist and so that's why I periodically dry it see where I'm at and then add more color so you can kind of see some of the colors from the collage that was underneath the modeling paste did show through like that blue there's a section in the top right hand corner that I uh, <laughs> messed up on because I wasn't patient enough to fully dry the modeling paste. I mean, I dried it, but not enough. So I'm going to try to fix it by adding a little button 
with some fabrics underneath some little like string and yarn and I also want to add some alcohol ink drops so that's a De La Romney red and I'm spraying it down and letting it drip because I think that's fun so I'm going to then add a few more colors I want the distress oxide inks now because I want you know to keep adding color to make it sort of peachy and make the perfect peachy pink color so now I'm adding the raspberry distress oxide ink to it just kind of putting it on there brushing it on there and now I'm going to add more ink so this is De La Romney purple and it's not moving a whole lot when I'm spraying it with water so I'm going to take a brush and move it around and spray it some more because like I said drips are fun so this is Adina Weekly gloss and I'm dribbling the pink on there and now I'm trying to spray it with water to spread a little bit get it to react and this is another Dean Winkley peach color that I'm spraying on and then this is a light pink it's not really spraying though so I'm just kind of drizzling it on there so now I want some gold because I love gold as well and now I want the glitter because I love glitter, and glitter seems very uh, inspiring and sort of magical. I mean, it sparkles. It just felt like it would be appropriate to have some sparkle on my page to bring encouragement and comfort to myself. Because when things sparkle, they seem to evoke joy and um, just wonder, that sense of awe and wonder. So I want to be able to look at this page and feel that awe and wonder um, as I look at it. And like I said, feel inspired. So this page is inspiring me to feel like I'm being healed. So now this is my pocket out of the Mamagami paper from the glass scene that I made, which again was from one of my collage papers that I uh, scanned and printed out on the glassine paper. So now I'm mamagaming it by crumpling up. So you start by folding the corners in and then you just keep folding it gently at first and you do that several times kind of folding it up then unfolding it and then after you get going for a while you can start crumpling it up in your hands. So, um, you just do this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I'm still kind of folding it up, but now I've got it folded up so well that I can begin to crumple it up in my hand. And then at that point, you can kind of go back and forth in your hands. Now, Mama Gummy is originally done um, this way for about 20 minutes. I didn't go for 20 minutes, but... I did go for quite a long time, in my opinion, to get the perfect crumpled, crinkly, glassine pocket. Because again, I like that texture and I also like the idea of using the crumpled paper, the mamagami, because to me it seems to kind of be a metaphor for my trauma but yet I'm recreating it into something beautiful and I think that's what God does with our life he takes our crumpled pieces and he just works it in a way that can turn out to be beautiful and the things that you know originally tried to harm us he turns out for the good Romans eight twenty eight says the Lord works out all things for the good for those who love him I love that scripture. That's one of my favorites. It's one of my staples. So my mama gummy paper, yes, it represents that. So this is going to be a pocket or maybe it is going to be a paper uh, glassing bag. I'm not sure at this point yet. So I'm experimenting with both of these ideas. And so I'm just folding it. Now I decided to do a pocket because it I already have a lot going on with this journal and I'm looking at those other pieces to see um, them in comparison that was the original so I'm folding this into a pocket and I'm then placing it on my journal page and 
then I'm getting my ribbon. That's what I'm going to use to decorate it with. I'm going to cut off these extra pieces on the edges that I don't need. And now I'm going to glue it onto my journal with the Fabri-Tac glue. I'm going to make sure everything just stays secure. So there's a little bit of paper sticking out that I don't need from the little insert tabs I created to glue it down. So I'm just cutting away extra paper which I don't need. Begin as beautiful as possible. Okay, adding more glue. Now I want to add my pretty ribbon, which I cut in half because it was too wide and I didn't want it to overshadow my pocket. And now I want to add Distress Oxide ink. I want to add a little bit of red to it to um, color coordinate because there is some red in the pockets, but also the page next to it is red. It has some red in it, I should say. So I want everything to be coordinated and to match pretty well. Um, the Distress Oxide ink, the red should um, make it pop a little bit more and I'm also going to add it to the edges of the journal page itself. So it's staying in a little bit more. So here's that ribbon. I'm going to glue it down. But I decided maybe it needs just a little bit more texture. So I'm going to put some yarn on there. Deciding which one I want. I have three different ones picked out. But I decide that I want this red yarn that I actually got for my daughter. She bought it for a project and then the project was over with. So I really like that. It's pretty. And that red makes it pop. And then, of course, it coordinates with the red. So now these are my Sumi ink. Um, Hebrew words for the Lord is there. And so before I glue it down, I decide that I need to figure out where my holes are going to go so I don't ac accidentally punch a hole in my Hebrew word. So I use my master board there to um, place my holes and then I'm punching them out. So now I can go back to trying to. Uh, and look at how things are going to look in my journal. That's the other page it's going to sit next to. And I'm going to pick out um, a paper for my card. So I want to make the journal card. And I have lots of collages that I could choose from. Because I make collages a lot. So the ones that I'm are that I'm considering using I'm putting to the right and the ones that I don't think will work I'm putting to the top so obviously I've got a lot there and a lot to choose from so what I'm doing is just holding up the collages next to the two pages um, in my journal to see which ones are going to fit and coordinate the best with the colors that I already have on there so I'm picking out quite a bit of possibilities. A lot of them I like and I thought would be good. So, um, yeah, I have a lot. <laughs> Always creating collage. And one day I want to make a journal for my collages just to kind of hold the, the collages. So I narrowed it down to these two. And now I want to look to see how my Hebrew word looks on them. So the vertical one is going to go on the journal card and the horizontal one is going to go on the pocket. That's where I want it on the pocket. So I'm experimenting with how it's going to look once it's in the pocket in the, the part of the vertical word I want. So this is some more decorative paper I made. I printed it out on awagami paper and now I'm crumpling up that little piece just uh, mama gummy in it just to add a little bit more texture and I cut out the one flower 
And now I'm just taking that red Distress Oxide ink on the edges and I'm gluing it down. And I'm going to go ahead and add some to my horizontal Hebrew word for the Lord is there, which is Jehovah Shammah. So I have a, I'm going to glue it down now. Stick it under my little lace. So I can see the words. And there's my journal card sticking out. Okay, so now I want to work a little bit more on my journal card because my journal page is done. So I'm going to cut off these little corners. I measured the corners first. And um, I'm trying to find the center so I can punch the hole. And so I punched my hole. And I'm going to decorate it, trying to figure out what I want to use. So I'm going to put some stamps on there and add a little bit more collage. So first I'm going to put the stamps. I really wanted to sew this, but I'm not a sewer. So I decided I'm going to use a stamp that's similar to a sewn edge. But first, before I do that, I want to add a little bit more collage and then stamp on it. So I decided that I like this uh, part of it, these these papers here with musical notes. Um, so I'm going to glue that to the side, the left hand side, and actually let the back stick out, like wrap it around it. And I'm going to now add some black ink to the edges of my journal card and now I found some tissue paper with the some text on it already and I like the way that looks but sometimes if you try to stamp on textured things it doesn't come out that well so it works out really well if you put it on like some thin tissue paper first and then you can glue it on you can have more of the the text from the stamp so i am glued some of that in two different places there. And now I'm going to go back to adding my border, which I chose a, a pretty flower border since I don't really have a sewing machine and I'm not really good at sewing yet. I wanted to get one one day. So this is a part where I have to kind of get everything measured out. So I'm using this little stamping gadget to uh, line up my stamp with exactly where I want it to be and I'm trying to figure out the best way to use it so I decided that well at first I'm, I'm putting it on the stamp and then trying to put it down the, the right place but eventually I figure out that I should lay it down there like that and then let it stick and then add the ink and then put push it down and get it in just the right spot and that seems to work out much better for me doing it that way so i don't have to fuss as much about lining up you know i get it right where i want it so this part is a little tedious but i think those little flower edges it's kind of like little flowers on a vine they look really cute um on the borders of it and like i said it's an alternative to sewing those edges which i also think would be really cute if I had done that or could do that. So I'm going to add this border all the way around my journal card. And I got these stamps from um, Temu. Temu has lots of cheap little stamps and things. So these were just some border stamps. You can probably Google or use the search bar to find some border stamps that you like if you're interested in this. So I'm almost done with adding my border. And it does look really cute on top of the collage and with the little bit of the text sticking underneath it in the top left hand corner, which you can't see yet, but later you will. So I think it's looking pretty cool so far. Nope. That's, I 
have my border done. I'm going to continue decorating my journal card. And I'm thinking about adding another awagami flower. And again, I painted these flowers with watercolors and I used some um, less permanent ink and markers on it. So I'm um, deciding what I want. I found these little papers. I got these papers from Timu again. And I'm going to fussy cut this flower because I think the orange colored flower would look really well with it. But I didn't want all of that flower. So I'm experimenting like where do I want it? How much do I want it? And um, where am I going to put it exactly? So it looks nice and not weird. Which I don't really like it right there. But I eventually figure it out. So I decide maybe I'll put those two together and I got too many leaves. I need to cut one of the leaves out. And now I try and I really like it in that particular spot. So now that I figured that out, I'm going to go ahead and glue it down with some Mod Podge. And I'm really careful not to cover over my Hebrew word. I'm trying to get under every part of the flower underneath those little parts of the stem and the leaves and by the way I broke off one of the stems but um, I think I either added it or it was a part that didn't need I can't remember at this point but um, yeah you can't really tell so I like to put the glue under and over and now I'm just kind of Again, debating on whether or not I should add that other flower. So, now what I want to do is outline my flower that I just added with a soft water soluble pencil. I forget what kind it is exactly, but it is water soluble. It's like a graphite pencil and now I'm just using a, a brush that I'm dipping in water to kind of create a shadow um, around the flower and now I want to make the flower pop with a little bit of that glitter fabric paint again so I'm just going to go on the flower with it all right I'm just finishing it up here with the glitter paint sure I get every part of the flower with it <laughs> aren't you glad I sped this up 400 percent I guess all together this thing took me over three hours to do the journal page and the journal card I'm not sure of the exact time frame but this whole processing part is Sped up 400%. Okay, so now I decide I'm going to add a cute little ribbon. I love that peach ribbon, and I want a little fabric scrap up there too. I kind of pre cut those fabric scraps. And now I'm punching in my hole just to make sure, you know, everything is going to be in the right spot and the hole's not going to be covered over. So now I want to take that little tag, and I believe I got these little tags at Timu. And I want to decorate it with alcohol ink. I thought about using a tea bag tag, but it was too small. So I decided I would go with this one instead. And I would decorate it just like I did those tea bags. I would just dump a little bit of the Picasso alcohol inks on it and spritz it with alcohol spray. So I just have a piece of paper and tissue paper underneath it to kind of absorb the extra. And also that those papers, the tissue paper and the, the white paper underneath could be uh, collage fodder for later because it, it does leave, you know, pretty colors behind. So I couldn't get that one to work right. So <clears throat> I opened it up. And... So... I'm gonna also put the alcohol ink on the string okay which I did and so now it's done 
and I want to add the meaning of that Hebrew word to the tag, the, the small little mini tag there. But I think at this point, I will add my number 12 to it. I'm trying to clean this. Thing. I actually don't use it, but I'm trying to clean all the little stuff. Okay, so I'm, I want to use a tea bag, but I just can't figure out where it'll go. Okay, so I'm looking for more paper scraps to add to this. This is more paper that I made in the back. Um, in the past, but this is a printable that I didn't make. I got this printable on Etsy, but the other printables are ones that I made. Um, that other one was a that printable is from Etsy, and that printable is one I made from my jelly printing and painting. So I'm just kind of looking to see which one will look better for the back of the journal card and I decided that this one will look better and it may come with it like a cherry blossom kit but I can't remember exactly where other than that it was on Etsy so I'm gonna go ahead and glue it down and I didn't quite cut it right so I'm just gonna trim it here Make everything match up really nice. And I really like my journal card already. I think it turned out really nice. And um, I like the back of it too, so I have enough room to do a little bit of writing. That is something I considered. So every time, it's, it's best to do like your whole punches before it gets too thick. So now actually I want to take that... Um, Part and um, actually just put the the smaller tag through that thing, <laughs> and now I want to add my my t number twelve to it because I do want to get the number twelve in there, and I wasn't sure where I wanted to put the number twelve before, but now I know that I want to put it on the little uh, tiny tag right there because I think it'll look really good. It's a rub on. So all you do is pull that back and then you uh, stick it on there and then you rub it on. Now I lost a number 12 in the process and I, I mean part of the number 12. I lost part of the number 2 and I tried to you know reattach it but I decided that was way too much trouble and all I have to really do is just use my permanent marker, my fine tip permanent marker to complete the number two. So now I want to add this pretty peach ribbon, which is one of my favorite ribbons that I have, but I'm considering using the other ribbon too, which I also love, but ultimately I decide that this peachy ribbon looks a little bit better than the other one. So now I want to add this butterfly, and this butterfly kind of fell out from the rest of the butterflies, and I thought it matched really well and looked good again it has a little pop of red which I think um, brings out other aspects of the red in the journal page and also on the page opposite of it as well so now I just want to ink those edges again make them stand out uh, I had used red before but I didn't think the red was sticking out enough so the black I think will kind of bring out the black of the Hebrew word a little bit and make things uh, have more of a border and so I'm going to do that on my little tag as well and then I'm going to write the meaning of the word the Lord is there and um, the Lord is good always I'm, you know the, the Lord is there um, the first sight part of it and then the Lord's good always on the back part of it so now I'm just seeing how everything fits and looks inside my journal 
page, but I decided that the back there still needs that ink because well, it just needs a little bit of border. And parts of it aren't stuck well enough, so I'm going to use my fabric pack to get it a little bit better. And now um, I want to try to stick it in there and then deal with that one corner that got a little smashed. There's a little bit of uh, paste sticking out. So I do want to, I'm considering adding that ribbon to the bottom of the journal uh, pocket, but I guess I decide against it. And then I want to add a few little sequins. I want to put a little sequin there and maybe add a few sequins to the pockets. And um, there was just a little bit of black that, a spot that ended up on that uh, Hebrew word that going horizontally. So I'm going to add a little bit of the sequin to cover that spot up as well. But right now I'm just putting a little bit of blue sequin on top of sort of like a pink flower sequin. So now I'm trying to cover up those two spots with the sequins. And I'm going to try to stick it on with the glitter glue, but that's not working. I couldn't for the life of me get that Elmer's glue to squeeze out so I just poured a little bit out and now paper clip that I opened up to try to unclog the, the glue stick is what I'm using to glue those little sequins down. And um, I thought just putting sequins everywhere will just be kind of cute and add, again add a little bit of sparkle and wonder and joy to the journal pocket. So that is what I'm doing here. And also I'm deciding on maybe adding the fabric up in the corner as well. But I haven't for sure decided if I'm gonna add or not, I haven't glued it yet. So now I want to, that's where it, what I decided to do with that little peachy ribbon that I liked, but I decided into something else, and that will be now a peachy, not a peach, it's sort of more like a coral pink fuzzy yarn. I, I love the fuzzy yarns. And I'm adding just a little bit more sequins and then putting away the rest of the sequins. So now I gotta deal with that, the upper part of it. But first I decided I wanna add a little string because I love those little yarns. I'm adding a little piece of yarn just to kind of hang out of that tag and it's got like a little <clears throat> ball, you know, ball of fabric or yarn towards the bottom. So now I'm going to experiment with what fabrics I want there and what buttons I want. I've already picked out the button though. I'm gonna use this one and I do want to add a little bit of ribbon underneath. So I'm not sure how much or which ones I want. So I'm just kind of adding it on there and kind of looking to see what, what I like. Um, I decided I want a few, but not too, too many. So I decided I want those and then I'm going to glue them on first and glue the button on top. And now I've picked up this little fabric scrap. I like that red in it. And I also like that little flower. And I think it just kind of complements like the red and the butterfly and some of the red in the pocket and then some of the red across from it on the other page. So now it's just about complete. I just need to do that fabric a little bit better, make sure everything stays on really well. And now I'm thinking about adding another embellishment. I'm looking through on my embellishments and I'm thinking okay little butterfly so I thought well maybe this purple butterfly will look good but I'm debating between that and the blue one but I decided no you know purple for some reason it looks really good there's purple you know in that pocket and then purple on the opposite page so I think that the purple is a good final touch to just make everything cohesive so now this is what the final product looks like 
thank you for listening. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like and subscribe. And you all have a fabulous day. God bless everyone. Bye.